We are now going to hear from His Excellency Jan Sedek, the head of the delegation of the EU, the European Union in Kampala. Your Excellency. He will be followed by His Excellency Yusuf Mondoha Asomanit, Ambassador of the Union of the Comoros in Ethiopia and permanent representative to the EU, the Union of the Comoros. Well, in his absence, uh, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and Vice Presidents and Honorable Ministers from the Member States of the Inter-African Coffee Organization, in particular our hosts, Her Excellency Vice President Alupo, Honorable Tumwe Bazen, Honorable Odongo. The Commissioner and Representatives of the African Union Commission, the Secretary General of the Organization of Southern Cooperation, fellow ambassadors, the leadership of IACO and UCDA, private sector representatives, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. What a pleasure it is for me to address you on behalf of the European Union. In my part of the world, I think the uh, President referred to us as the cold countries. We drink coffee all the time, for breakfast at 10 o'clock, after lunch at 3 o'clock, and of, even after dinner. And coffee is also one of the most important links between Africa and Europe. And this is certainly the case for Uganda. As you know, the EU is the most important, important importer of Ugandan and African coffee. And as we all know, coffee is a growth market, and some African countries, like Uganda, remain amongst the most important coffee producers in the world, in volumes and in terms of quality. Here in Uganda, 3.5 million families depend on the coffee sector for their livelihood. 3.5 million. And around 60% of your coffee is exported to, to the EU. And that is why I think coffee is such an important link between Uganda and the European Union. But in Africa, you do not drink much coffee, with the exception, of course, of Ethiopia and a couple of other countries. Actually, your coffee consumption is one of the lowest in the world, but this means there is a great potential in increasing it. Apart from the economic benefit you would gain, Africa would also gain power as a price setter, like other producing country, countries with a considerable home consumption, such as Brazil and India. So the EU clearly acknowledges the importance of further investing in coffee value addition and in the African coffee consumption market, and is prepared to support this growth in all possible sustainable ways, as we have been doing here in Uganda, in Rwanda, and in East Africa as a region. In Uganda specifically, the EU has been supporting the coffee sector by investing in research and innovation, by promoting climate-smart agricultural practices, and by stimulating sustainable production, marketing, and consumption. Over the five past years, our support has reached almost 45 million euros. In addition, the EU is piloting corporate sustainability due diligence in the coffee sector in Uganda and other African countries. The lessons learned will be used to further develop our support to stakeholders in partner countries, in implementing due diligence, and in managing the impact of EU regulations in this field. And let me advertise a very interesting panel on this topic on Thursday. Our support to the coffee sector is part of our partnership with Africa. The EU is committed to leverage investments through the Africa-Europe Global Gateway Investment Package, worth at least 150 billion euros by 2027. The rollout of the package has started and it includes support to partner countries in boosting their local production and decrease their dependence on expensive and unsustainable agricultural inputs. As part of our support, the EU and the African Union are looking at identifying a number of strategic value chains to be promoted and coffee is one of those selected as a priority for Uganda and for many other African countries. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
Africa and the European Union are important trading partners. The EU is the number one export destination for African products. You normally export one third of your total exports to the EU. In 2021, Africa exported almost 150 million euros, billion euros to, uh, to Europe to compare with, as a topical example, less than two million euros to Russia. As an example, you have to understand your markets. As an, ex sorry, as an exporter, you have to understand your markets. And the EU market is changing. Consumers are increasingly conscious of global challenges like climate change and biodiversity, and they desire ethically produced products. This is also reflected in the increased market for specialty coffee, in which the EU is a leading importer. The EU also continues to certify coffee with indication of origin, which leads to higher payments to farmers. It is the EU's wish to continue to be a proud consumer of superb African coffee. An often used argument is that roasting of coffee goes together with deep knowledge of specific consumer markets and their specific coffee blend demand. And that coffee, once roasted, needs to be off the shelf within three months' time. This, it is being said, would make it difficult for African roasted coffee to be integrated in the EU market. However, the EU is prepared to look beyond the old paradigms by supporting the proposals of the G25 of you to process coffee for local markets in Africa and by, importantly, considering to facilitate and incentivize partnerships with roasters from the EU to market coffee processed or roasted in Africa on the EU market, as you have suggested, Your Excellency. It is important, it is important to recall that there are no import tariffs or taxes on the EU border from coffee coming uh, from Africa, whether processed or not. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we look forward to the submission and adoption of the Kampala Declaration, the EU pledges to support the declaration as a way of ensuring that coffee continues contributing to the improved livelihoods of people on the continent. We also pledge to support the efforts under the African continental free trade area to promote value addition in order to enhance intra-regional Africa trade, especially in coffee. So in conclusion, let me wish you fruitful deliberation in this uh, G25 Africa Coffee Summit and thank the government of Uganda, IACO and UCDA for their efforts. As the EU in Uganda, we have established a very strong partnership with UCDA and with its managing director, Dr. Emmanuel Yamulemye. So while leaving the podium, I again remind about the coffee as a delicious link between our two continents. And as a concrete example, I uh, wave with this special EU blend of coffee that UCDA developed for the EU delegation for our Europe Day celebrations this year. And I present it, I allow myself to present it to you, Your Excellency. Um, may I directly do that? Uh, and I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Give him a round of applause as he hands over. Very good. Thank you. The camera people capture that moment. Okay, you can capture it from wherever you are.